Hello and welcome to a new program on KLTV. This is Dave Hodgson and the program, well, it's all about local history. So, a snappy title, eh? What can we call it? We decided upon the local history program, which of course will do exactly what it says on the tin, won't it? We'll be doing both outside broadcasts and studio interviews every month. And our first guest is Stan Atkinson of Oaks, which is here in Huddersfield, as I'm sure you'll know. Stan and I are presenting a session of old photographs, and Stan's great knowledge will add plenty to the background, and so on. So no pressure then, Stan. OK, firstly, two scenes we've got here of a once very famous automotive firm, Woods Autos, starting with an advertising of their services. Now... They weren't. They didn't make vehicles, did they? But they made parks for vehicles. Uh, Whereabouts were they situated? Well, they set off up at Half Moon Street in Standard House. And as they grew bigger, they grew to uh, Fitzwilliam Street. Yeah. And now they're on Corn Road, and they export to over 60 countries. Still going? Still going. My goodness, you wouldn't think an automotive park place would... Would still be going. Oh, it's still going. Now, we all yeah. know that uh, Kirklees, and particularly Huddersfield, is famous for its mills. Uh, what we were producing then in Huddersfield? Oh, well, there was a lot of woollen mills, especially in Millsbridge, but mainly it was fine westerns. The good top, stuff. Top quality fine westerns, which went all over the world, Huddersfield yeah. westerns. We, we sort of left the rough carpet work to uh, Spenberg and Edmund White. That's we? right. <laughs> <laughs> Local mills, though, didn't escape the attention of the Luftwaffe during the war. This is the damage to Wellington Mills after a bomb hit it. Yes. And it's pretty devastating, isn't it? How did they recover from that and get working again? Because they did, didn't they? Oh, they certainly did. They recovered. Yeah. And it was back to work as normal. Yes. Now, one uh, set of mills that there is some controversy and mystery about, and that's Titanic Mills, and what it produced, or rather didn't. And you've got a different angle from most people who talk about it, haven't you? Yes, well, I worked at George Madison in the 1980s, and the, the old Pat Me was there, told me it never opened, and I believe them. So it's been empty for all its life? I've been looking up, and apparently there was, they put some spinning machines in, mm. 1,000, but it was six floors high, and that wouldn't fill a corner. And there's no records of any production whatsoever. Right. No photographs of any workers, which the examiners asked for. Nobody's come forward. And nobody knows anybody that's worked there. So you would say that's pretty conclusive, well, I, I suppose. I know it is, but yeah. everybody doesn't believe yeah. me. Now, now, you mentioned the workers there. What was the camaraderie within the mill, work, the, the mill workforce? Oh, absolutely wonderful. Everyone got on with each other, and it was really great atmosphere. And, I mean, it was a time of philanthropy, wasn't it? I mean, the mill threw Christmas parties for all the workers, didn't oh, they? Oh, but they hired a train and took us to Blackpool, brought it in graves. <laughs> and, then, and then at Whiteley's Cafe in Huddersfield, yeah. a free cafe and a free bar all night for all the workers. Doesn't happen wonderful, nowadays, does it much? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I seem to remember Huddersfield became a centre for dying during the First World War. I can think of, well, the big one, ICI, but of course one of the more famous ones, uh, LB Holiday. What do you know about these two or well, uh, other dye works? Well, I know LB Holiday used to have racehorses. Right. And, it was and, Colonel, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. And ICI, in, Imperial Chemical Industries which is his proper name, they moved on from dying to agricultural... Um, That's ICI, isn't it? Making, yeah. Uh, making things to make plants grow without that, soil. That's it, isn't yes. it? Yeah. Uh, so, again, ICI doing well, but LB holidays didn't last, did it? No, it faded. As uh, soon as the war was over and they didn't want khaki anymore. It's all uh, garages now. Yeah, yeah, all garages. Uh there were advertising stunts that firms used to employ. Oh, the Crowthers the Tailor were one of these that had a great idea with a really kind of off-the-wall challenge. Can you go through what they did for us? 
And they, I don't want you to take 24 hours over. Oh, no, fact, well, I, I know they made a, a suit from the sheep's back all the, through it, finished, and the man wearing it, and it's all documented so people can read how long it actually and, took. And it was done well within 24 hours, it? was in, so, in, in, in the morning at Mills Bridge. Yeah, in the morning the sheep was wearing it, in the <laughs> evening the, the male model was wearing That's it. That's correct. Yeah? That must have taken some doing. Oh, yes, well, the but, textile workers were very, very good. Yeah, and quick by the sound <laughs> of it. <laughs> now, you have a goodly amount of knowledge on the soft drinks trade. Firstly, <laughs> take a look at this photo. This is Shaw's Wagon doing a home delivery. Now, was home delivery, we seem to think these days, it's a new thing. But yes. it's been going for donkey's years, hasn't it? Oh, it has, yes. Was yours one of the first to start it? As far as I know. Yeah. And that's Corona, but I think it was Shaw's. Shaw's that did it. In Huddersfield. it must have taken a heck of a long uh, time to get round everybody that wanted bottles of pop, <laughs> wasn't it? Well, they started up, up Red Road. Yeah. And then That's more or less where the bus station is Yes, now, and then it? moved down to uh, Willow Lane. Yeah. In uh, Burtbane. A wonderful factor there with its own spring water. That'd be good. Yes, and then <laughs> Schwetz bought it and, and made a mess of it. Uh, yeah, is, <laughs> is, it, is it gone completely now? It's all shut down and yeah. boarded up. Well, Stan, we could go on for some time, couldn't we, let's face it. Oh, but yes. you'll have to wait, I'm afraid. So it's thanks to Stan for the photographs and the reminiscences. Next time, we'll be actually going out of the studio and going to, would you believe, a military museum, not heard of it, and if I said it's in Milnes Bridge, so it's local, and you still won't have heard of it, I'll bet. But all will be revealed next month, so why not trace some local history yourself in the meantime, and let us know what you're doing, because we'd love to tell everybody. Bye for now. <laughs>